RFID tag encoding and decoding standards and schemes. Let's do it. Welcome back to Tech Made Simple. Today we're going to go even further in depth on encoding and decoding RFID tags as well as using different standards and schemes to keep your tags organized out in the field. Some of the commenters from my other videos asked for a little more clarification on the math behind encoding and decoding RFID tags. So that's exactly what we're gonna talk about here today. Not only that, but I'm also gonna give some examples of different encoding schemes and standards that are used throughout the world that allow for tag organization worldwide. Before I jump into the encoding and decoding mathematics, I just wanna quickly set the foundation for why organization with your encoding scheme and standards are important in the world of RFID. It has to do with closed loop and open loop systems. A closed loop system means that your, in this case, RFID system is only being utilized within the four walls of your facility or organization. An open loop system means your RFID tagged products are going to circumnavigate the globe and be read by other readers outside of your specific RFID system. So you can see if everybody was using their own schematic, their own encoding scheme for their closed loop system, and then they expect their tags to be read and understood by other readers around the world, it would be impossible because everyone is using a different numbering system in order to encode their RFID tags. So this is where organizations like GS1 and the RAIN Alliance have put in a significant amount of work to clear the tag clutter out there in the world by implementing standards and schemes that allow for tags to be read, understood, and organized throughout the world. All right, enough on that, let's get into it. So in my other video titled RFID Programming Guide, which I'll link up above here in the video, I covered the different types of data that can be encoded into an RFID tag. Now I'm going to explain the structure or the limitations to which you can encode all those different data characters into the RFID tags. If you remember the four different memory banks in a RAIN RFID tag, there is the reserve bank, the TID, the EPC, and the user. And again, if you don't remember, check out down below in the description, I'll link the video that explains the four memory banks for a UHF RAIN RFID tag. So within each of the memory banks in a RAIN RFID tag, there are certain block structures that have to be followed in order to properly encode an RFID tag. So you can think of the blocks of an RFID tag like different segments or different lines as you're reading through the RFID tag. The first limitation is that you have to completely fill out each block of memory in order to successfully encode the tag. So I'll give you an example. So these RAIN RFID memory blocks have a capacity of two bytes. So referencing my videos from the past, two bytes is equal to 16 individual bits, which are those ones and zeros that are communicated back and forth from the reader. And four of those bits, four of the ones and zeros, equal one character that you recognize as a hex character. So for instance, if I wanna write the number one, I'm actually writing four bits, zero, 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 one. So now going back, each RFID memory block has two bytes or 16 bits, zeros and ones, that have to be written completely to successfully write the tag. So that means I have to encode to my RFID tag in segments of four characters. So again, I can write four characters to my RFID tag. I can write eight characters, 12, 16, and so on. Now you're asking, what if I only have five characters that I need to encode for my RFID scheme? Well, we can write the five characters that are important to your data scheme. However, to completely fill up the UHF memory block, 
we have to pad those five characters with zeros either on the left or right hand side of the five characters of importance. So for an example, if your five characters equal the number 10,001, we would have to encode the RFID tag with 000, 000 10,001 to equal a total of eight characters. Again, this isn't meant to be an entry level understanding into RFID encoding. This is a little higher level explanation as to how RFID tag manufacturers would go about encoding RFID tags successfully. So to quickly recap, all RAIN UHF RFID tags have block structures of two bytes, which is equivalent to four characters. And each block must successfully be filled completely in order to encode the tag. So moving over to the schemes and standards for encoding RFID tags, the organization GS1 has their tag data standard, TDS, which lays out all the different schemes that should be utilized when going to encode your RFID tags for open loop systems. Most people understand barcode more so than they understand RFID. So I'm gonna compare to barcode for the case of simplicity. So just as there's many different types of barcodes, you have code 128 barcodes, code 39 barcodes, you have data matrixes, you have QR codes, RFID tags are all not the same. You have different frequencies such as UHF, RAIN RFID, HF, NFC, low frequency, but they all work to meet the requirements of special use cases. So these standards are important because it's all about finding and identifying the right product throughout the world as quickly as possible. A good example is perishable items that have a specific expiration date. They need to be identified as quickly as possible because time is literally of the essence with those goods. So if a perishable item is encoded with a random encoding scheme, that good is not going to be identifiable throughout the world quickly enough for that product to get to where it needs to go in order to be useful. So I'm gonna give you an extremely useful tool that I used all the time when setting up encoding jobs during my time as an RFID engineer. GS1 has an encoder decoder tool that allows for you to understand what the RFID encoding value is going to be based on your specific company prefix and the item that you're looking to tag. As you can see, there are many different GS1 encoding schematics or keys that they have set up to better optimize the supply chain with RFID. You have GTIN, SSCC, GLN, GRAI, GIAI, and so on and so forth. Each of these schematics are specifically organized to handle a specific category of goods circulating the supply chain. So companies and organizations that want to utilize the GS1 encoding schematic must reach out to the organization GS1 to get set up with their specific company prefix. This will allow your products to be identified by that specific prefix when scanned throughout the world by other organizations and their RFID readers. In other words, your products will be identified all the way down to your specific company. There are a few other things that go into that, but just understanding that each company has their own prefix to identify their products, I think is sufficient for today. <laughs> Finally, the RAIN Alliance has also been working to optimize encoding schemes to help clear up tag confusion and tag clutter throughout the world. They have developed the RAIN ISO numbering system, which is similar to what GS1 and other organizations are doing by allowing a company to receive its own company prefix that can be encoded before the specific item level data in the RFID tag. Again, encoding and decoding RFID tags doesn't have to be difficult. And if you stay organized and use resources like that from GS1 or the RAIN Alliance, you can be ensured that your RFID tags will be encoded properly and avoid those items being lost throughout the supply chain.
If you have any more questions or comments, make sure you leave them down below in the description and know that all the tools and resources, as well as a few other helpful links that I talked about today will be linked down below in the description for you to check out for yourself. But as always, make sure you leave some comments below on what other RFID concepts you want made simple.